So we did talk cover the entire like ele elementary canal, aka our GI tract. Again, elements in elementary, just referring to food and nourishment. So again, what is it? Basically, a tube that runs from your mouth to your anus, and we went through that tube. But is that all there is to your digestive system? There is more. And you also have your accessory organs, and the main accessory organs are your liver, your gallbladder, and your pancreas. So we're so let's do a little backtracking and go back to the small intestines, and let's pretend we're just done with the stomach, we're done with mixing up the bolus with gastric acid and making chyme, and now we're dumping the chyme into the small intestines. So what's the first part? Well, you have your duodenum, and then your jejunum and ileum, but let's focus on the duodenum for now. So the pancreas, one of our so-called accessory organs, so what happens is that they see that the head of the pancreas is actually cradled by the duodenum. And even though the pancreas looks like it's very solid in this picture right here, the pancreas is a very, very delicate organ made of very delicate tissues. I've heard an analogy used like it's like a, a paper, tip, like a bunch of sand held in a paper towel. It's like super delicate. And the thing is that, okay, well, we have our duodenum, which is part of the main GI tract, because again, it's part of that big tube and part of your intestines. So the duodenum is the first small part, first part of the small intestines, but it's the intersection where you have all of these three accessory organs we're going to talk about that all connects to the main GI tract at the duodenum. So the liver is an, again, accessory is just in terms of actually location. Does that mean it's not important whatsoever? The liver is probably the most unoverlooked, underappreciated organ in this entire book. It's mentioned the most in the digestive system, but it does much more than help with your digestive system. If your liver fails, the rest of your organs are going to fail. That's why they, if you ever have the blood work, they always check your liver enzymes to make sure your liver is healthy. So the thing is that it's very important for metabolism, so not just your own metabolism of nutrients, but also in metabolizing, like when you take a drug, pretty much any drug you ingest through the oral route has to, all the chemicals from that eventually goes through your liver, which changes it chemically. And it's also very important in homeostasis. We'll cover that really soon. And there's also the pancreas. Again, it's accessory because it's not part of that main tube itself. It's like a branch that leads to that tube, but it doesn't develop from that alimentary canal that runs from the mouth to the anus. So it's like something on the side, but accessory does not mean not important. Accessory doesn't mean unimportant or optional. Accessory just means it's not part of the GI tract or proper. So it's also very important for chemical digestion. It produces a lot of chemicals and enzymes, and also important for metabolism as well. So if you have, don't have your liver, you don't have your pancreas, that is going, well, yeah, if you don't have your liver altogether, good luck staying alive. Same with the pancreas. They're very essential things, and we did cover the pancreas as it related to the endocrine system. But now we're going to talk about its exocrine, its digestive system roles. And let's talk about the pancreas first. So again, the pancreas, what we have here, the head of the pancreas is being cradled by the duodenum. And then you have the body of the pancreas. This is everything that's jutting out from the head of the pancreas toward the left side of your body. Now the pancreatic duct, this is the main duct that basically takes all the pancreatic juices that the pancreas produces and squirts it into the GI tract. And that's different from your endocrine system. Because remember, endocrine system and hormones. Where do you secrete hormones? What's the primary carrier of hormones? Blood is the primary carrier of hormones, right? But is this secreting it into the blood in the pan in terms of like the pancreas's role in digestive the digestive system? It's exocrine se it's uh, exocrine secretion because it's actually secreting it onto a surface. And even though you don't have your mouth open all the time, you don't have the anus open all the time. But this part is exposed to the environment, so it is going to the, it's on the surface, it's in the surface inside of your body, but it's not in your bloodstream, it's in your GI tract. So all the pancreatic juices are going to end up in your GI tract. And then you also have the accessory pancreatic duct here, so there are multiple routes, and that's why you have these little openings over here. Now what, what does the pancreas, what does the pancreas make? Well, they have the pancreatic, pancreatic duct and all these little branches up here. 
So again, endocrine is bloodstream, and you have endocrine cells in your pancreatic islet. So pancreatic islets, they secrete into the bloodstream. That's why you have all this, why I think is the artery and all these capillaries over here. Now you have pancreatic blood vessels, but exocrine secretions, these are going to go in a different route. They're not going to go into the bloodstream. They're going to go inside that pancreatic duct. So these are not called pancreatic islets. The exocrine cells are called pa pancreatic acini. So these are like different types of cells. They still produce a secretion. They do produce substances and chemicals and molecules. But instead of going into the bloodstream, they go into the pancreatic duct and eventually into your duodenum. Alright, so then what do they make? They make this mixture called pancreatic juice. So pancreatic juice, what is that? Well, it's made by those acini and the epithelial cells as so an exocrine secretion because, again, it's going inside that pancreatic duct. But it also has a alkaline or basic pH. And why is that important? Well, remember that gastric acid, it's super acidic, that pH about like 1.5 to 3.5. Well, what happens if that acid keeps on traveling at that very acidic pH throughout the rest of your digestive system? Well, if there's any place where there is not enough mucus, that could dissolve the insides of your body, right? So it's good that the pancreatic juice has an alkaline basic pH so that once you're done mixing up that the food, the, the bolus in your stomach and making chyme, that you can neutralize the chyme so it's easier in terms of like its pH balance going through the rest of your digestive tract. It also contains many enzymes. So enzymes we're going to cover real quick. And you actually produce a lot of this. This is why the pancreas, even though anatomically it's like an accessory structure of the digestive tract, it's not that it's not important. It's actually very important because it produces a lot of this juice. And what's in this juice? Well, it has buffers that make it more toward the alkaline and basic side of the pH scale. It also has enzymes. So remember our four types of macromolecules. And again, three of them are on your nutrition label. So we have four broad categories of macromolecule enzymes. Now, there's not a single type of enzyme for each, but this is our broad categories. And what we have are amylases. In general, they break down carbohydrate polymers, such as starches and glycogen. And then lipases, they break down lipids. So that's pretty easy, right? So they break down things like triglycerides. They don't break down cholesterol. And if we have time in the metabolism chapter, we might be able to talk about that. But they break down triglycerides. And triglycerides we'll cover pretty soon in this semester. And then proteases, well, what does protease sound like? It sounds like protein, right? So proteases break down polypeptides into uh, proteins. And nucleases break down nucleic acids. This includes DNA and RNA. So that's why, like, if, even if like um, a, a wayward virus makes it itself into the GI tract, if it's not evolved to or have the defenses to survive the different enzymes and acids your GI tract has, if there's any like random DNA or nuclei or DNA or RNA, if you eat DNA and RNA, these nucleases are going to break it down as well. So pancreatic enzymes, what do they produce? Well, what type of enzymes does the pancreatic? pancreas produced. That's another way of rephrasing it. Okay, so then you have pancreatic alpha amylase and that breaks down carbohydrates. Then you have pancreatic lipases and they break down triglycerides and the pancreatic proteases. They break down polypeptides and then you have also have pancreatic nucleases. They break down nucleic acids and this is the special thing about pancreas. Like some different parts of your body, like you have lingual lipase, you have sal salivary amylases in your mouth, so you can digest carbohydrates and lipids in your mouth. Your stomach has, well, I don't, I should, I forgot if it's in, I know it's not in the martini version, but there's gastric lipase and there's also all these various proteases in the stomach. But the pancreas is special because your pancreas produces enzymes that can digest all four types of biological macromolecules. So again, this is yet another reason why the pancreas is important. It produces all these enzymes that help to digest pretty much everything you can that has some sort of nutrition, 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 nutritive value. And they also, <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. And also they have they are, have all the endocrine functions as well. Remember, the pancreas also makes insulin and glucagon. 
and also some yeah you have also your delta cells and also your F cells as well. So the things that uh, the pancreas is a very vital organ. And um, this is what we have here. Look at this pancreatic enzyme formula, and I think you can actually buy these over the counter at like a local farm uh, drugstore. And what do you have there? Well, what do you notice it has there? It's a plant source and has amylases, lipases, and proteases. So say someone is having trouble or they have pancreatic insufficiency where they're not producing enough pancreatic juice, well, maybe they can take a supplement that increases their amount of the enzymes so that they're able to chemically digest their food better and get more nutrition from what they eat. So yeah, notice that these are all there. Okay, so then the pancreatic duct goes this way and it opens up here. And you have your accessory pancreatic duct, but there's yet another tube over here. What's this third tube? It's not part of the pancreas, 